welcome back knitters i'm jana with pearl together today i'm going to show you how to pick up that front edge of our campsite cardigan the patterns down below in the video description it's not too late to start we're not going to be doing prize drawings for finished objects until the second week in july so if you still want to get on board go check out the video playlist that i'll put down below that has all the tutorials for all the step-by-step -step instruction that i've done also feel free to join the facebook and ravelry groups we have lots of conversations over there and you'll get all the help you need. So before we get started picking up that front edge, I wanna welcome four new patrons that have joined us in the last couple of weeks. Welcome to Valerie Hill, Kathy Cook, Fran Sluman, and Lisa Tigg. I hope I've pronounced your names correctly. My apologies if I didn't. If you wanna learn how to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together, and you can see what I'm offering for your small monthly pledge. Okay, let's get started picking up that front edge and I'll show you a couple of things I decided to do. Um, I added a little short row from about my collarbone all the way around to the back just to make the neck sit up a little higher. Um, sometimes sweaters tend to like, you know, kind of like fall down in the back a little bit. So I adjusted that slightly. You can do that or skip it either way, but I did include instructions on how I chose to do that. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm beginning on the bottom of the front right side of my sweater, and the instructions direct me to pick up three stitches for every four on the, along the edge. Okay, so I'm just gonna go, you can see the edge that I've got going here. It's kind of, I'm just gonna go in and, and go in under both of those legs if I can. Go in under both legs of that first stitch. And then I'm gonna take my new yarn I'll leave a good five or six inches and take my new yarn and just knit right into that. Now I know that's gonna be loose initially. Then I'm gonna go and do the next one and I'm gonna do three stitches for every four of these. And I will tell you I'm not uh, super picky about the rate at which I'm picking these up. I just want them to be as even as they can be. And if that ends up being, oh, you know, three for five or whatever. Okay, so I've done three, now I'll skip one and I'm gonna carry on. But if if it in, if I get off a little bit, I'm not gonna to be too, good, too concerned about it. Um, I'm gonna to wanna to have a multiple of four by the time I get back to the other side so that I can have a, my two by two ribbing. So I've done three, skipped one, and now I've done one more. So I'm just gonna carry on going in under both legs on the edge and picking those up all the way up this side around the neck and back down the other side. All right, let me show you that again. So I've done one, two, three, skip one, one, two, three, skip one. If you're unsure where to go in, you can see both of those legs of that stitch and there's kind of a hole right there underneath. So that's where I go in under both legs and I pick that up. And that's pretty easy to see as you're going along. So the next one would be right here. Whoops, missed it. There we go, the next one's there. Then the next one is there. So I know this is dark yarn, but hopefully your yarn is a little easier. It, it, it's easy for me to see, but it may not show up on camera very well. So now I'm gonna skip that next one and go in here. Hopefully you can see where I'm doing that. So I'm just doing three, skip one, three, skip one, all the way around. I finished picking up all the stitches down the edge and I have no idea how many I have. I mean, it's, it's a lot. I have, I believe I have a 50 or maybe it's even a 60 inch cable on my Chagu needles. Um, so that's nice that I have a super long cable and I don't have to smash everything together quite as much. One thing you'll notice on the pattern is that it says that now you're going to do the two by two rib. So knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. So you're going to have a multiple, however many stitches you have needs to be a multiple of four plus two. And the reason for that is, is you'll have knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, but you want to end with another knit two. So that's where the extra two comes in. So when I turn this over and I'm gonna start knitting back, start going on the wrong side or the inside, they have to disregard all these ends that I have because I did so much skein swapping to get the tonal variation that I wanted. So that'll take me a while to weave those ends. But nevertheless, I'm gonna to wanna to end with uh, knit two on my right side. So that means I'm gonna begin, going back the other direction, I'm gonna begin with a purl two. Okay, so you just want to, you know, think that through. And as you're knitting back around, so for me, I'm going to start with a purl two and then just knit two, purl two, because obviously I'm on the wrong side of my work on the way back. And as I go back around, I'm going to look ahead 
once I get, oh, probably two thirds of the way, I'll look ahead and make sure that I'm going to come out right as far as my sequence goes. And then I'll adjust if I need to from there, either by picking up an extra one along the way or whatever. I'll see what I need to do in a little bit. Okay, like I said, I'm going to count ahead here and make sure I come out right. I'm going to want to come out with a purl to at the end so that I have a knit to at the end on the right side of my work. So I'm going to need to pick up an extra stitch along the way so I come out right. Now remember we did uh, a sequence of pick up three, skip one, pick up three, skip one. You can kind of see where that's happened here. Like there's a little gap and there's a little gap. All I'm going to do is go and pick up one of those little gaps and carry on. Now I realize that that's going to make a little bit of a jog downward since I already have an established row here and then I'll pick up another one. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Alternatively, you could also, uh, if you needed to increase and you didn't want to pick up something in the gap, you could just do a knit front back to create an extra stitch if you need to, to make sure you come out right. Okay, I've gone around and back one time, and the reason I have these stitch markers here is because I tried on the sweater, and then I w felt around to where my collarbones were, and if you recall my interview with Alicia Plummer, the designer of the Campside Cardi, um, she said if you're concerned at all about the back of the neck of the sweater kind of hanging down and then not sitting as high as you might want to on the back of the neck you could add a couple of short rows here now all I did was try this on I put some stoppers at the bottom you know so it wouldn't come off the needles while I did that so it is kind of bunchy on the bottom but I tried it on and I was able to um, even out the stitches around my neck and then I just put these markers at the point where my collarbones are and interestingly that ended up right where these raglan increases begin on you know within a stitch or two on both sides so that's pretty handy so what I might consider doing is just doing a short row or two now all that means is I'm going to knit up and around and when I get to this marker I'll turn my work and go back the other way and then do that a couple of different times using either the wrap and turn method or a German short row. I'll show you what I'm gonna do when I get here. So again, my working yarn is now at the bottom of the right side, so I'm gonna be knitting up here, doing my two by two ribbing. I'll skip this one and go across to this marker, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, I've kind of got things upside down. This is actually the back of the neck. Um, I've knitted up, up the right side. This was the first marker. I've gone around the back of the neck. This is the second marker. That would be, if I was wearing the sweater, this would be in my left front. So I've knitted to that second marker on the raglan increase. Now I'm just gonna do a short row, I'm gonna, meaning I'm turning my work here instead of continuing all the way to the end of the row. So it's just called a short row for that reason. Now all I'm gonna do here is I've just finished two purl stitches and normally I would knit the next one. Instead, I'm gonna take my marker off and bring my yarn to to the front. I just finished this purl. I'm going to leave my yarn to the front for a moment and I'm going to slip the next stitch to the right hand needle, wrap around, taking my yarn to the back, put the marker back on, and then I'm going to turn my work. So this is a little bit awkward because I have so much sweater, um, so bear with me just a moment. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is move my marker back to the right Probably should have gotten a different shaped marker. Okay, this is the stitch that I've wrapped, so I'm gonna go ahead and slip that over as well, and then take my yarn to the back because my next stitch is a knit. Okay, so you can see the difference in the coloration. We'll recognize that wrap when we come back, and you'll have the marker to remind you as well. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue in pattern in ribbing until I get to the next marker. Okay, I've knitted, I've knitted back around the back of the neck to the next marker. Same thing, I've done a couple of knit stitches in, in pattern and ribbing. I'm just gonna move this marker over. I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front because the next is a purl, but I'm not gonna purl that. I'm just gonna wrap it, take the yarn back to the left side with the marker. You could even actually, maybe what I'm gonna do is put the marker on the other side of, put it on the outside of my wrap. Just remember, just be consistent if you're on the inside or the outside of the wrap, depending on which you prefer. So I've wrapped that stitch, and you can tell I've added that little collar, a little scarf around the bottom of that stitch, and now I'm gonna turn my work and go knit back the other way. Okay, so turn your work, maneuver the sweater around, 
And now we're gonna knit back the other way, keeping in pattern. So my marker is gonna go over to the right. I have wrapped that stitch. You can see the yarn is coming around the back. I'm gonna slip that one that I've wrapped over to the right and take my yarn. Actually, I'm purling next, so I'm gonna leave my yarn in the front and I'm just gonna go ahead and purl that next stitch. Now you just don't wanna pull it real tight because you want your wrap you don't want to pull it real tight. You want your wrap to stay relatively loose because when we come back, we're going to pick that up and knit it with this stitch to conceal it. Okay, just go back to the other marker, knit back the other way, and I'll show you how we're going to do that, conceal the wrap that we made the first time. Okay, I'm coming up to the marker where I did the first wrap and turn, and you can plainly see there's the wrap that I did the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and purl this next stitch, just like normal. Now what I want to do is I'm going, I've got two pearls here. So the next, the wrapped one is a knit. So I'm going to just take this over to the right hand needle for a moment. I'm going to grab a hold of that wrap. It's like grabbing the collar of that. I'm going to lift it up, lift it up, and I'm going to put the right needle back on there and I'm going to knit these two together. And that's just going to help conceal that wrap behind there. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove my marker and carry on knitting down this side. Now, if you wanted to do um, more short rows to raise the back of the neck even more, you would just repeat that again, repeat that same maneuver between the markers like I did before, however many times you felt was necessary or however much length you want to add on the top. But I'm going to remove the marker and carry on knitting down to the edge. When I turn around at the bottom edge and come back, then I'll do the same thing here and I'll show you how I'll conceal the wrap on this stitch as well. Okay, I've knitted back around to this other marker and you can also see I've got one more knit stitch and then you can see that that's where the wrap is from before. So when I pick up a wrap on a purl stitch, I'm gonna pick this, I'm gonna move it over to the right hand needle again. I'm gonna pick this up, put everything back onto the left and I'm just gonna purl those together after I bring my yarn to the front. And that will keep that wrap in the front and conceal it from the other side. So now I'm gonna drop this marker as well because I don't need it anymore and I'm just gonna carry on down the other side. Now all I've done by going back and forth a couple of extra times making those short rows is I've height, you know, I've added a little bit of height to the back of the neck. You can see here I have, how many rows do I have there? four, five, whereas here in the front on the sides, I just have two. So I've added a little bit of height in the back just to help the back stand up a little bit and not slouch. So you can do that, or you can just knit it back and forth straight, certainly up to you. Okay, you can see I've got a good inch and a half or so of my front edging going. So I'm gonna carry on probably three inches total and then I'm definitely going to try this on and see if I like the width of it and if it meets in the front or if it doesn't. So you'll wanna do that and see what you prefer. Um, I had hoped to have this bound off and finished before this video went live, but it's been a busy week on the farm and so that's not gonna happen. But I don't wanna hold up the video. I want it to be um, on the channel on the day that I promised. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload this. Now, when you get ready to bind off, when you've when you've knitted this ribbing as much as you choose, um, you can either use the stretchy bind off that we did at the bottom of the sweater or a standard bind off like I did at the bottom of the sleeves. I'm probably gonna do a standard bind off because I don't wanna have any flaring um, and I haven't done the stretchy bind off enough uh, to really have practiced mitigating that. So I'll probably do the regular rigid bind off, you know, the normal bind off like I did at the bottom of the sleeves and just use a little bit larger needle when I go about that. So um, one other thing to note is that I do have some pulling in right here and I'm hoping that will block out all, you know, when I block this, I'll pin this out straight and hopefully that will take care of that. I hope you find this video is helpful. Be sure to click the thumbs up and subscribe if you do. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Feel free to join the Patreon the Ravelry and the Facebook groups. I'd love to see you over there as well. Be sure to post a photo of your finished cardigan over in the prize drawing thread on Ravelry if you're interested there, or just post a picture because you wanna share. I'd love to see it. All right, thanks for watching and thanks to my four new patrons for all your support. These videos couldn't be happening every week without patrons like you. Thanks so much.